بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الفه وأكرمني بنور الفه اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have to free to continue our study of مفاتيه الحياة by آية الله جوادي عمودي and as you know we are in the second section of the book which is about how to interact with fellow human beings and the first chapter was about relatives, parents, children, husband, wife, in-laws, other relatives. Uh, then we talked about Sayyids as progeny of the Prophet. Now we are going to talk about people outside our own family. So our fellow brothers and sisters in faith. So first, we will talk about mu'minin, how we should interact with mu'minin. Then we should talk about how to interact with people who may be Muslims, may be believers, but not committed, not pious and sometimes people who pretend to be Muslims, for example, what should we do with them? And then we talk about also people of other faith, people of no faith. So there are lots of discussions here. So for today, we talk about mu'minin, means people who share with us our faith and also they are committed. Maybe sometimes there are people who don't share our faith, but they are committed to their own faith and they can be very close to us, as we have said in uh, interreligious discussions. But I am explaining uh, the book. So, Ayatollah Jawadi Amuli starts with emphasizing on the significance of Iman. All human beings, even not only human beings, all animals, even not only animals, all living beings and non-living beings, they are all to be respected. In Islam, every creature is a sign of God and we have to be respectful, <coughs> whether it is soil, the water, air, plants, birds, animals, human beings, they are all to be respected, but there are different degrees. For example, the respect that we have for a human life is not the same as respect for an animal, or the respect for an animal is not the same as respect for, for example, a plant. There are different degrees. Mu'min compared to non-mu'min has more respect. Not that non-mu'min doesn't have respect, but there is something more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Sajda, verse 18, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ مُؤْمِنًا كَمَنْ كَانَ فَاسِقًا لَا يَسْتَبُونَ This is what also we say in Du'ai Kumail. Are those who have Iman and those who don't have Iman and they make sins the same? It means that the answer is obvious. You don't need uh, anyone to tell you. Like, هَلْ يَسْتَبُ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Are they equal, those who know and those who don't know? Is alim and jahil, are alim and jahil the same? No. So, mu'min and uh, fasiq are not the same. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you have been given the gift of iman, yeah, it's a gift. It doesn't mean that it comes arbitrarily, but it still is a gift. Yeah, 
For example, you work hard and because you have worked hard, you get a good job. But still, this is gift. You have good risk, it's still is a gift. You cannot say, as Qarun said, Enama utitu ala ilmin men andi. I had knowledge and expertise, and this is what I have achieved. Anything you achieve is a gift. Yes, you have to qualify for the gift. Like, we give some prizes to the best students. So they make efforts, but it's still it's a gift. So, Iman is a gift. La tamunnu alayya islama. Balillah yamunnu alaykum. Don't oblige me and say, you know, we have done a favor to you that we have become mu'min. If you are really mu'min, it's Allah who has given you this gift. Okay? So, Iman is a great gift and mu'minin are to be respected more. And if you also happen to be mu'min, what should you do with other mu'minin? You have to be respectful. If you as a mu'min don't show respect to them, means you are emptying yourself from the gift of Iman. Yeah? It's a very important point, you know. If I am alim and I don't respect other ulama, means I am questioning myself. <laughs> if elm is such a good thing that you think because of your alim you have to be respected or you have to be rewarded, you have to be given something extra, why you don't respect then other ulama? If to be mu'min is such a good thing that you are proud to be mu'min, why you don't have a special regard for other mu'minin? So Allah says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةٌ among believers, there is brotherhood. Brotherhood has many dimensions. One of the very first things which comes with brotherhood is there's intimate relation. You can never boycott your brother. You can never wish bad for your brother, but even more than that, you cannot stop wishing the best for your brother and helping your brother and being happy to sacrifice for your brother. Plus, brotherhood shows a level of equality. Yeah? Some level, I'm not saying exactly the same because we can have elder brother, you know. But it's almost the same. Among brothers, maybe one is more wise, more pious, but still... His brother, it's not like father, you know. So, Mu'minin, from one perspective, they are brothers. Although, because of other things, some of them may be higher. For example, someone who has knowledge, someone who has, I don't know, experience, wisdom, leadership, whatever. But from one perspective, we are all brothers and therefore, we have some kind of velaya over each other. This is why Allah in another ayah says, Al Mu'minuna wal Mu'minat ba'adhuhum awliya'u ba'ad. Surah Tawbah, verse 71. Believers are awliya for each other. In the lecture uh, series about collective nature of velaya, we explained that velaya is vertical. But also horizontal. Every moment has wilaya over another moment and vice versa. Therefore, ya'muruna bil ma'roof wa yanhawna anil munkar. You can do amr ma'roof to me and I can do to you. It's not that it's just from top to the bottom. They are somehow at the same level. There is a Hadith here that Imam Baqir alayhi salam says, Qama rajulun bil basra ila amir al mu'minin. This is very beautiful hadith and it also is a lesson for life. Brothers are not always the same here, believers are not always the same. 
there are brothers that you have tested, you have verified the reliability, trustworthiness. They are there for you in the times of joy and sadness, in the times of ease and difficulties. These brothers are very, very important. It's difficult to find them. You must look for them and you must never lose them. But there are other people who are also mu'min, but the level of relation is not that deep. Either you have not tested them or you are sure that these people are not there for you when you need them. They are there for you to come to happy occasions. You know, they, they are birthday party friends, not... <laughs> friends that can come when you are in hospital or you know you have debts to pay no some people are good for birthday party it's good alhamdulillah so imam ali says don't expect from these people more and don't lose them you need them in the workplace in community there are people that you know deep in their heart there is nothing special you know for you but they smile they are respectful they give you a cup of tea that they have taken from the mosque. No problem. <laughs> Maybe they don't buy it for you, but you know, it's okay. Don't expect too much from these people. Because then you end up cutting relation with this person, with that person, and then you have no friend. But look for those who are kebrita ahmar. Those who are very rare to find and uh, never lose them. So let's see the hadith of Amir al-Mu'mini. قَامَ رَجُلٌ بِالْبَسْرَةِ إِلَىٰ أَمِيرِ الْمُؤْمَنِينَ A man in Basra went to Amir al-Mu'mini, stood up and said, يَا أَمِيرَ الْمُؤْمَنِينَ أَخْبِرْنَا أَنِ الْإِخْوَانِ You know, Amir al-Mu'mini was not resident in Basra, must be during a trip either for a battle or maybe for, you know, other visits, because Jamal was in Basra. So, please inform us about brothers. He said, Brothers are two types. Brothers that are trusted and reliable, and brothers that you can laugh with each other, smile with each other. You can share, you know, some time with each other. Walmal, reliable brothers are like your hand, like your wing, like your family, like your money. You can rely on them, you can benefit from them, you can support yourself with them, you can defend yourself with them. فَإِذَا كُنْتَ مِنْ أَخِيكَ عَلَى حَدِّ الثِّقَةِ If you are sure that this brother or for sisters, this sister is such a person that you can rely, then you must really appreciate them and you must offer what you can to them. But Amir Rumi says these are very rare. It's not easy to find them. But there are also brothers that they are not that reliable, superficial brothers. You, you gain some pleasure from them. You, know, you are not alone, for example. You know, you can travel together, you can walk together, you can sit next to each other, you can have a cup of coffee together in the office.
for example, in the university, in neighborhood, you need someone to, you know, understand each other, respect each other, and spend some time together. فَلَا تَقْتَعَنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْهُمْ Don't stop this with them and don't stop giving them this type of brotherhood and relation. وَلَا تَطْلُبَنَّ مَا وَرَاءَ ذَلِكَ مِنْ ذَمِيرِهِمْ And don't seek beyond this from their, you know, self. You know, sometimes you say, does this person really love me? Does this person really you know, wish good for me, and then I try to ask them, and you know, I spoil everything. Let this be like, as a possibility. Don't need to investigate and find out that they may not actually be like that. It's enough that maybe they are, and even if you know they are not, it's okay, at least this much, this level is good. وَبْذُلْ لَهُمْ مَا بَذَلُوا لَكَ what they have offered you, given you, give them. Min talaqatil wajh. When you see them, they are not angry at you. They are not upset with you. They are not, you know, showing ugly face to you. So you also be the same with them. Wahilawatil lisan. They speak nicely to you. They respect you. You speak nicely to them. Don't say either they have to be from the first category or I stop relation. One of the most important parts of practical wisdom is mudaratun nas, is to be able to cope with people, with their akhlaq, and with every person, find a way to engage. Don't let people become your enemies or strangers, as much as possible. Of course, Hakim has different degrees, different levels. You don't treat everyone equally, but also you don't just aim at perfection. You must not be perfectionist here. You shouldn't give them warmth, the second category of people. You can give them more, but don't expect more and don't endanger yourself, you know? So if you can <coughs> comfortably give them more, give them more, but don't think it's going to be returned. So you have to make some risk assessment. But even for the first category, it's only even for the first category, even if you are going to suffer, you help them. Because these are brothers and sisters of faith that are proved to be honest and genuine. Whatever they need, you give them, like you do with your own blood brothers. More important than blood brothers who doesn't have faith. But if you do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what difference does it make if the person gives it back to you or not? Because maybe the second category would be more difficult to do because you know they're not going to do it back to you. But it will make so you have to see, is this person worth giving this or not? If, if, it, op if it open eyes, you think that you have to do it, it's okay. But just understand that this person has this much of regard for you, and you cannot look at it him as a long-term investment. <laughs> okay? If you are happy, that's fine. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Islamu an tusallima qalbak or Toslim, but it seems Tosallima is better. Islam is, because if you say Toslim also, you can say it means to submit your face or to surrender your, sorry, to your heart, Qalb. But also, وَيَسْلُمَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنْ لِسَانِكَ وَيَدِكَ But also Muslims should feel safe from your hand and your tongue. You now we have this Al-Muslimu man saluma al-Muslimu min yadi So, don't harm people, whether it is with your words or with your actions. Sometimes we think words are not important, but sometimes words can really injure 
and break heart of people. <coughs> Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam also said, "Laisa minna man ghasha musliman aw dharrahu aw ma karahu." Is not one of us who ghasha musliman means the one who is not honest with a Muslim and somehow, you know, may deceive a Muslim. Or dharrahu, harms a Muslim. Or ma karahu, makes plots against. Uh, of course, this doesn't mean that if it's not a Muslim, you can do this. It means that, as I said about family, that for example, you have regard your family for your family more than others, but you have for others as well. Don't look at it from the other side. Don't think that this means that non-Muslims are not important. This is to emphasize extra on members of the community, like family. <laughs> Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, من عامل الناس فلم يظلمهم Look at this beautiful hadith. Many times we said the path to heaven is not very complicated. You don't need to do mu'jizah. You don't need to be a hero. Just be careful. Don't focus on very complicated things and forget Obvious things. Yeah? Man amal al nasa falam yadhlumhum. The one who interacts with people but doesn't do zulm. A taxi driver, a shopkeeper, an employee, an employee, anyone, a neighbor. They interact but if they don't do zulm to each other. وَحَدَّثَهُمْ فَلَمْ يَكْذِبُهُمْ And it speaks to people but doesn't tell lies. وَوَعَدَهُمْ فَلَمْ يُخْلِفْهُمْ And promises people to do something and doesn't break his promise. So if there is someone that doesn't do zul, doesn't tell lies and keeps his promises, this is one of the people that their backbiting is haram. You cannot backbite them. These are mu'min. And these are the people that their nobility is completed. وَظَهَرَ عَدْلُهُ And their justice is obvious. وَوَجَبَتْ أُخُوَّتُهُ And you must observe brotherhood with them. Simple. Don't do zul, don't tell lies, keep your promise. Means be a reliable person. Why is this more classic Buddhism than Islam? Not for only this, but this is one of the cases. But there are other additions, because maybe even someone who doesn't have this, still you have to avoid qaybah. But there are also other things. But in general, you know, our ulama say that qaybah of mu'min is haram, not generally speaking, if someone is not mu'min. But if he's a mu'min who is sinner, then depending whether that sin is covered or not, that's different. Also, Imam Sadiq salam said, Al-Muslimu akhu al-Muslim la yadhlimuhu wa la yagushuhu wa la yakhudhuluhu wa la yagtabuhu wa la yakhunuhu wa la yahrimuhu. Muslim is brother for another Muslim. Would not do zulm to his brother. Would not deceive his brother. Would not leave him without help. 
would not backbite his brother, would not betray his brother, would not deprive his brother. This is the way a Muslim is supposed to be. So as you see, it is very easy to become Muslim. You say Shahadatain, you become Muslim in five minutes. But to be really Muslim is not easy because it brings lots of responsibility. Now, after this general introduction, we go to different categories of people. So first, how to interact with mu'mineen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ayyuhan nas alaykum bil jama'ah wa iyyakum wal furqa. One of the most important things about mu'minin is their unity. Mu'minin should be united, connected and united. Not disconnected or connected but always fighting. Sometimes people are connected, they all go to mosque but they keep fighting. <laughs> go to mosque and don't fight. Some people say, I don't want to fight so I don't go to mosque. No, you have to go to mosque. But also you have to be united. <laughs> Amir al-Mu'minin was asked, what should we do about heresies, about, you know, true tradition or, you know, heretical tradition? Haq batil. Su'il al-Imam Ali alayhi salam an sunnati wal bid'ah wa an al-jama'ati wal furqah. He was asked about what is sunnah, what is bid'ah. Sunnah means something which is known to be part of Islam. is an established practice. Bid'ah is a heresy. Yeah? Ulama say, Idkhalu ma laysa min ad-deen. Fiddeen bid'ah. If something is not from religion and you make it a religious practice, it's better. Some people go further. Etkhalu ma lam yu'lam annahu min ad-deen fi ad-deen. Like, uh, it's better, you know. Not only if you know it's not from religion and you make it religious, it's better. Even something that you don't know. Still, this is better because you should only ascribe and attribute something to Islam that you are sure. You cannot say, Maybe someone has said this. You know, I say something. I say there is two rakat salat in tonight. Maybe one person has said it over these 14 centuries. <laughs> no, this is also better. Even if you don't know, it's better. Doesn't need to be known that this is better. Okay. So Imam Ali Salam was asked about sunnah, bid'ah, furqa, jama'ah. Jama'ah means together, unity, furqa means division, separation. His answer included this. Al-Jama'ah Wallahi Mujama'atu Ahlil Haq Wa In Qalb Jama'ah here in Islam unity is unity of the people of the truth. So don't say, you know, I live in this city, for example, I see who has more population and who are more in number, I have to unite with them. You have to unite with the people who have proper aqidah, proper... Of course, friendship is okay. Engaging with other people can be okay. You know, there are lots of types of relations. Unfortunately, some people, you know, read one hadith or ayah and then they say, you have to stop everything and, you know, migrate or whatever. But what is important is everything has its own level. So, he said, Al-jama'atu wallahi mujama'atu ahli al-haq wa in qalbu. You have to be with the people of the truth, even if they are, slow, uh, sorry, if they are low in number. 
امیر المومنین حساب سز لا تستوه شو فی طریق الهدا لقلت اهل if you are sure that you are on the right path don't feel lonely because there are not many people there yes if you are sure that you are on the right path not that you just embark on journey without making sure that you are on the right path wal furqatu mujama'atu ahl al-batil wa in kathuru and division is to be with the people of falsehood even if their number is a lot so when we say unity we don't mean unity in a quantitative way yeah we are not interested in numbers maybe in this city there are five people who believe who practice maybe there are 5000 maybe there are 500000 i don't know what is important is find the people of the same understanding the same principles the same values and do not let anything divide you language ethnicity i don't know different practices different ways of celebration different ways of you know running functions different types of niyaz these things should not divide us why you go to this masjid that masjid is closer to you so because this masjid for example they don't give the niyaz that i like i am used to this type of niyaz not that type of niyaz or you know for example these people uh, bring for example you know better or more famous reciters you know. these are not the things that a mu'min should base his relations on these things food and i don't know famous reciter or you know uh, you know this for example few thousand people come I am not saying these are not important but I'm saying you should have a good reason that between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say why I go here and I don't go to that place sometimes maybe we have to go to places which are more quiet to give them encouragement yeah sometimes we have to go to a places which are very populated because we want to make a, for example a stance it depends but generally speaking just because a place is more crowded doesn't mean that i have to or this reciter is more famous or you know i have to find out where my presence can be more useful yeah allah knows maybe if i go to a place that there are five people and i make them six is more pleasing that there are 10000 people i make it 10001 who knows Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said astakthiru min al ikhwan as much as you can very beautiful increase your brothers fa inna li kull mu'minin da'watan mustajaba every mu'min has a dua which is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala You must try to have more people who pray for you. Dua is very important. At dua o salahul mu'min. But if this salah is in the hand of your brother is more important. <laughs> if your brother is praying for you. If you are using this salah, <laughs> maybe you make mistake. Or maybe Allah doesn't listen to you. As you know, there is a hadith that I think, if I'm not mistaken, Allah said to Musa alayhi salam, pray with the tongue that you have not committed any sin. And he said, no, I don't have that. I said, with the tongue of your brother. Because you have not committed sin with the tongue of your brother. Most of the time, of course, sometimes... We are spread lies, so even in the tongue of people, we are committing sins. But most of the time, they are not doing something wrong based on our instruction. So, try to have more brothers, more sisters, because they pray for you. 
and they have accepted dua. Also, Imam Ali Salam said in a similar way, because every mu'min can do shafa. So inshallah, they can do shafa for you. They can intercede for you. Also, he said, Try to have more brothers and more brotherhood with mu'mineen. فَإِنَّ لَهُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ يَدًا يُكَافِئُهُمْ بِهَا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a special right for them, a special you know, hand, a special right for them, that because of that, He rewards them. So include yourself in the circle of mu'mineen and benefit from dua, from shafa, from reward of Allah for mu'mineen. When Imam Zaman is praying for Mu'minin, and you have separated yourself from Mu'minin, then you may miss many opportunities. You may tell me, Sheikh, sometimes these Mu'minin are not easy people. <laughs> it's true. It's not that everyone has akhlaq of the Prophet, but what's the solution? It's our family. Can we boycott our family? We cannot. So we have to engage. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لو أن أحدا منهم يصبر مع أصحابه If one of mu'mineen is patient with his companions, with his brothers and sisters, لا يقطعهم and would not disconnect ويصبر في مثل جوعهم ومثل غمهم and he is patient when they are hungry when they are you know uh, sad he is with them sharing their hunger sharing their grief إِلَّا كَانَ لَهُ مِنَ الْعَجْرِ كَأَجْرِ السَّبْعِينَ مِمَّنْ قَزَى مَعِي قَزْوَةَ تَبُوكِ So no woman is patient, doesn't disconnect, is patient sharing their hunger and their grief, unless Allah would give him reward of Sabreen, 70 people who were with me in the battle of Tabuk. It was one of the most difficult battles. So we are in London, we are in, I don't know, Manchester, we are in New York, we are in Toronto, Canada. What, what, but patient and trying to connect, trying to be part of the community, encourage community. Help people to come, to connect, to circulate, you know, a positive vibe in the community. You get the reward of 70 mujahid. Not ordinary mujahid, mujahid that they were under the leadership of the Prophet. In the time which was very critical because that was the formation time, formative period. Yeah, anything those first generations of Muslims did... It's very important because that was a very critical time because there was chance of Islam altogether stopping. So be patient. May Allah inshallah help me also to be patient because I need also someone tell me the same thing. Imam Bakr alayhi salam said, Ejtami'u wa tazakaru. Get together and have muzakara, discussion. Maybe a scholarly discussion, muzakirat al muzakirat, of course, or maybe problems of the community, you know, something for the sake of Allah, good discussion. What happens if we do ijtema, if we get together and do muzakirat discussion, what happens? Tahuffa bikumul malaikah. Then angels will surround you. 
when you get together and try to discuss something to benefit or to solve a problem, angels get around you. But then shaitan may send you a message, you know, come out. Rahimallahu man ahya amrana. May Allah have mercy upon those who revive our effort. It means that revival of the affair of Ahlul Bayt, revival of Vilaya, depends on your ijtima, on your meetings, on your muzakara discussions. Whether you like it or not, you are now responsible for the cause of Ahlul Bayt. Fortunately or unfortunately, it's now in our hands. There are no other people. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, we have undertaken such a great responsibility. So you cannot treat it as you like. You have to handle it as they like, as they expect. And for sure, they want us to be together. A father, a leader, never wants his family or community to be divided. We have to be together and work together. And last thing for tonight, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, Majtama'a thalathatun min al-mu'mineen fasa'idan. No three mu'min got together, or more, three or more, four, five, six. No three or more mu'min got together Unless angels also have been present with them, the same number. This is the minimum. If they make a dua, but dua for good. Ammanu. These Angels would say, Amin. Wa in min sharran. So either they ask for good or they ask refuge with respect to bad. Sta'adhu min sharr. Then these angels say, Oh Allah, please protect them from this bad thing that they were worried about. وَإِنْ سَأَلُوا حَاجَةً And if they ask Allah for a request. تَشَفَّعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَسَأَلُوا قَضَاءَهَا They do shafa and ask Allah to grant their hajah. So if I am alone, maybe no angel would say Amin. But if I you know, tell you, brothers, sisters, let's go together to Masjid, to Husseiniyah, get together in our house, but... First, to public place. And then we pray. Then, inshallah, angel will be there. And they would say, Oh Allah, please grant them their hajat. So, unity of mu'mineen is very, very important. Inshallah, after this, we have very good discussions continuing. And I can give you a little list. So, how we should support each other. Material support, a spiritual support, emotional support. Sometimes people don't need money, but they need someone to care for them. We will talk about this. Then uh, how we should do with people who are sinful, there can be people who are sinful in the community, in the family. What should we do with that? What should we do with the people who pretend to be Muslims? And then we go to non-Muslims. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us believe and behave in the way that he expects from mu'mineen. And in a special way, we ask him for unity. We ask Allah to give us that kind of large heart that 
would help us to overcome any prejudice, any hatred, any dislike for the long-term interest of Ummah, so that inshallah we can work together and be together as one united family. Amen.